On the 30th of July 1958, Catherine Bush was born in Welling, England, and with that, one of the most influential women in music was born. Kate is probably my favourite musician, and with this mini documentary, what I want to do is shine light on her outstanding life and career so that all her new fans, after uh, the, the massive success of Running Up The Hill after being featured on Stranger Things, all these new fans, I want to I wanna show them, you know, there's more to Kate Bush. She's a brilliant woman. Now, Kate began writing songs at age 11, and by the age of 16, she had produced a demo tape with the help of her family, which contained over 50 tracks, um, which was sent to record labels, but was rejected but it did however end up in the hands of David Gilmore the Pink Floyd guitarist who would help Kate produce a more professional demo tape which only contained three tracks but was sent to EMI who then signed Kate at the age of 16. <laughs> In August 1977, Kate began work on her debut album, The Kick Inside, after leaving school with O levels and completing some mock A levels, uh, taking dance classes and mime lessons and doing a few small local shows with her KT Bush band. And uh, with the album, EMI had originally wanted the track James and the Cold Gun to be her debut single, but Kate fought back and insisted that it should be Wuthering Heights which was clearly the correct choice as Kate topped the UK and Australian charts with her debut single, which was record breaking as it made her the first British woman to top the UK charts with a self-written song. The album itself was released on February 1978, which uh, was also a huge success, which, and it peaked at number three on the UK album charts, selling over one million copies and going platinum in the UK. Unfortunately, it had little success in the US. The next album, Lionheart, was released only nine months after the kick inside, something done by EMI to try and capitalize on the huge success of her debut album. However, this album would become perhaps the only blip in an otherwise spotless career, as the album did not receive much critical acclaim and is not well liked by fans to this day. The album peaked at number six on the UK Albums Charts, Kate's only album not to land in the top five. The album was certified platinum in the UK, but remains her least successful and least liked album of her discography. After the release of her first two albums, in 1979, Kate began the tour of life, the first of only two tours in her entire career. The tour had 24 dates and lasted for just over a month with performances from uh, her first and second album and also performed a song Violin and Egypt which would be included on her next album Never Forever. The tour was praised for its use of dance, miming and various other techniques. The production of her next album previously mentioned began after the tour of life. Kate would co-produce this album and it would be her last release not to be solely produced by herself. The album would contain tw top 20 singles, Babushka, Army Dreamers and Breathing, all which would become fan favourites, particularly Babushka. You'll see it on her top 5 Spotify if you click on her profile. The album was a huge success as Kate became the first female artist to enter the UK album charts at number one. Uh, the album also garnered critical acclaim once again and went over to sell 100,000 copies in the UK, which is less than her previous two albums. However, had much more success globally, selling 100,000 copies in Canada and France and 250,000 copies in Germany, much more than her previous two releases. The album did still fail to sell in the US with very few sales. Out in the garden is hot for the heaven and Kate's we... fourth album, The Dreaming, would be her biggest flop in terms of commercial success, peaking at number three on the UK album charts, but only remained on the charts for 10 weeks 
and selling less than 100,000 copies in the UK. However, things are not all bad with this album, as it received much praise from critics at the time and even more praise today. Many fans regard it as their favourite of Kate's releases. Personally, I love the album and I'll probably place it number number two out of her, out of her albums. It's a good album, you should definitely listen to it. It's a bit of a quiet taste though. <laughs> This being the first album which Kate produced on her own can explain the eccentric nature of the album and the experimental aspects and perhaps why it failed commercially. But its failings did lead to Kate making some large changes in her personal life. She moved out of the city of Kent, uh, favouring Kent's countryside and this change in scenery helped Kate create subjectively her greatest work and objectively one of the greatest albums of all time. That album, of course, being Hounds of Love. It's in the trees. It's coming. When I was a child, mommy and I Released in 1985, three years after a previous album, The Dreaming, and it marks the comeback of arguably Britain's greatest female artist. The album was recorded in, in Kate's personal studio, which she had built in a barn on her new farmhouse in Kent's countryside. And that began in the summer of 1983. Mixing and overdubbing began in November of the same year, which lasted around a year. But before we talk about the album, we must talk about its lead single. It's why you're here, probably. It might not be, but running up that hill. its release in August 1985 it reached number three on the UK singles charts and number 30 on the Billboard Hot 100 which finally gave Kate some significant success in the US. Running Up That Hill would land itself in the top 10 UK singles charts three times in three different decades that being 1985, 2012 and 2022 when it peaked at number one for three weeks and also reached number three on the Billboard Hot 100. The album itself contained two sides, the pop oriented first side and a more experimental side two which tells the conceptual story of a woman floating at the sea at night. The album would receive massive commercial success and critical acclaim, being loved by fans upon its release and to this day. Rolling Stone in fact ranked it number 60 on the list of the 500 greatest albums of all time and the album will peak at number one on the UK album charts and number 30 on the Billboard 200 and the album would go on to sell over 1 million copies going two times platinum in the UK selling 100,000 copies in Canada and France 500,000 in Germany and 200,000 in the US which finally gave Kate some deserved US success and you know the, the the success of this album cannot be understated. It sent Kate Bush back into the public eye, and her next release would cement her. There. In nineteen eighty six, Kate would release the compilation album, The Whole Story. Yeah, see the title. You know what's going on. It would earn Kate her third number one album and would become her best selling release going four times platinum in the UK with sales over 1.2 million and 6 million worldwide including 200,000 in the US. In October of 1989, Kate would release The Sensual World, her sixth studio album, which I'd say is my favourite Kate Bush album and it was released after a four year hiatus since her previous studio album. The album would have three singles, including the top 20 lead single, The Sensual World, the other two being top 40 hits, This Woman's Work and Love and Anger. This Woman's Work in particular being a fan favorite to this day. The album would receive critical acclaim and commercial success once again. It reached number two on the UK albums chart and number 43 on the U US Billboard 200. It will be certified for platinum for sales over 300,000 in the UK, which is less than her previous albums, but this one would go gold in the US for sales over 500,000. So 
some real, real, real success in the US here with this album. They must have been Love and Sensual World. I can see why. It's been praised for its unique nature with and use of high vocals and pop elements. What's up guys, I'm just editing the video now and there will be a part two coming where I cover her career after the Central World and well after the Central World up to today. That is coming. Uh, other than that, like and subscribe. I hope you enjoy the video.